Hello SBF family! I got inspired and decided to draw my very own Fable Thorn crest, family crest and shield. Now do you remember from our Monster High Roller Maze I did make a shield for that display and it just seemed like this was a perfect opportunity to go the extra mile and show you exactly how I made that one so you can make Monster High or Ever After High. I started off with just a piece of scrap cardstock, folded it in half, and made whatever shape I wanted for the actual shield. That can be variable. Now you can look on the internet under Family Crest. There's all kinds of ideas if you want to draw your own. Of course I own none of these and I do not own the Monster High picture one either. That was a screenshot that I printed and it's just there to show you how to do it. You know, you're on your own for doing that yourself. You can't sell. So here is the shape I decided on for my Fabel crest. So here you can enjoy a little bit of speed draw of how I drew this by myself, which I seldom, seldom like to do is draw. So there is a rarity seeing Wendy draw. I did use that cutout to make the shape and used as um, a stencil to have my shape on a nice piece of drawing paper. Here is just a good look for you to check it out close up, see what I did. This is just my version. Of course, you can do whatever version you like. I really wanted the eye to pop. Now what I found was that it was a little too big. So, and I didn't want to mess up my original pencil crayon artist drawing. So I copied it, scanned it, and printed it in a smaller size. Now when I did the Monster High one, that is what I used was a picture from the internet. So now I'm really doing it pretty much exactly the way I did for that. I am going to do three versions here to show you some different options. I had a card there, just an old leftover card, a piece of cardboard. You can use the backing of one of your boxes from the dolls or just a flat, just, just a thin piece of cardboard I got from somewhere. Most important to me is putting the glue on the back of the photo paper or drawing picture, whatever you have, and then attaching it to whatever you're using as a backing and then cut. Um, it makes the cut between the photo and the cardboard much more precise. First is the one where I just use a greeting card. Second is the thin cardboard from wherever or the backing from a package. And third, of course, is the full-on thick cardboard, which is what I used for the Monster High Shield. Depending on your need, you can use whichever you like. But I thought I'd go through and show these all so you can really see how each works to make your decisions. Now when I cut things and it has boarding in between it or anything, I tend to like to use a black sharpie and just fill in the edges as you can see. It just makes it look a little neater, takes it one step above just being cut from something. And of course on the back, I will just paint or fill it all in black. You don't have to if you were just attaching it to the wall. Um, now that one was the piece of card, card, greeting card. This one is the thicker cardboard. Who knows where it was found from? Same idea, just, just it's just a detail. To me it's just an extra detail that makes things look more professional. And I'm a little OCD that way. As an example, here is Faye Bell's um, box art. I do this same step with all the box art I cut off. 
cut out to use just makes it look better and if you see it from the side of the room you don't see that cut cardboard look so now we're moving on to the cardboard one which is thicker I've shown this in many different things but I'm gonna show it again here the paper kind of just went jagged just a little bit because of course it's harder to cut on the thick cardboard I precisely made that drawing have the black outline so I could use the black sharpie to clean that up and now back to this little technique I use with the hot glue gun to fill in the edges of cardboard put it in generously let it fall in then take the tip and don't squeeze any more out just use the tip the hot tip to form it the way you want it to clean up your cardboard edges that really helps a lot when you're working with cardboard those of you who watch <laughs> our room tours and things forever after high know that i use this technique quite a bit it really takes your cardboard up a notch no doubt mr alex was so gracious to be my wonderful camera person here so i could use two hands and give you all that full visual i will continue that all the way around and then when i'm done especially the bigger one i did paint them all i used paint instead of marker i can't stand the smell of sharpie at this point i have finished all three versions using the paint and now i gotta put the little hand holder on it or if you put a tack in the wall and you can hang it my velcro i'm not using that was when i had it stuck to the wall in the roller maze so that's something extra you can do if you prefer i wanted to make it removable be a shield and a wall art but in this case, I'm just going to put the hand holder on. You want to put it a little bit high, imagining that it was on the hand. It won't tilt too far down. I hope that makes a sense. Um, if it's more in the middle, it will tilt so much that you won't see it. So here is my three versions. And then I just took any old ribbon. Oh, I guess I was showing there that all of them are strong. So whichever version you use is good. Now um, I'm checking out, yeah, what am I doing here? <laughs> okay, I'm looking at it more. I guess I'm showing you more. Sometimes I just video and don't know what I planned on saying. So here's my little piece of ribbon, just a little two inch piece. Nothing, it doesn't have to be special. Just um, fold it over, hot glue it on. And of course I might retouch the back with a little puffy paint, cause you all know I like puffy paint as well puffy paint on this one i used glow in the dark to make all the texture wherever i wanted it and needed it on the edges i used different colors so that one has a nice little extra bit of spice when it gets dark and glows that's kind of neat stickles of course is not puffy it's flat and i did want to put some details on here and some sparkle and some glitter we ought to have some glitter anywhere that i might like it and you can see the differences in just a little extra bit of sparkle just to bring a little bit more oomph and light i didn't want to put too much on this one because i thought it would i was considering glow in the dark in the eye and then i thought yeah it might take away too much of it i also put the puffy paint around the edges just because and i did put a little bit of, on the bottom of the ribbons I felt that was just a little extra insurance too that the ribbon wouldn't fray and unravel and just waste my time making that hand holder. I did feel like maybe I shouldn't have used the shiny um, photo paper on this one. I wasn't too fond of that. The other ones I used matte. It's all the discretion. But I felt like the drawing kind of looked better in the matte and I have a solution for fixing that. So here I'm going to show you that the one done on a greeting card is in Fabel's hand and works perfectly well. So if that was all I had at hand to use, it works just fine. Here is the cardboard one, which is a little bigger. I did make those other ones a little smaller. Just wanted to try something different. Here's my solution for the shine. You can use Mod Podge as a sealant. No sealant if you don't desire. I used a matte finish. I also did that on the Monster High one as well, if I remember correctly. So here it is, all done. The pretty custom crest and shield for Faybell in her wonderful dorm room. I hope you've enjoyed this little video journal. And if you make a version, let me know. See you next time.